Well, I'm a little bit concerned with some of the information I recorded on my data log. Now keep in mind, this is all just idling and, you know, revving. Um, I don't think I revved it above, I want to say, 4,000 at any point. But, here's what I'm worried about. I'm watching the bottom of my, now keep in mind I have no idea what I'm doing, I'm not a professional. So I'm trying to get back to, closer to the front of this data log and I don't know how to rewind it or anything like that. But, if for some reason, at the very bottom, I keep seeing these, what I am assuming must be timing retards. There's no indicator what this means. You know what I mean? I'm looking at my <clears throat> RPMs at that particular moment, math reading in pounds per minute, MAP and KPA. Uh, for some reason, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, that engine at 3,200, a little over 3,200 RPM should have no reason whatsoever to see 49.5% spark. Like, you know what I mean? If that, in, in fact, if that red line at the bottom there, if that is a knock event, because when you watch these tuning videos, they talk about knock retard, paying close attention to your knock events, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, hold up here. Because on the videos I watched, all the knock events were on the same line parameter as your timing. That way you could watch, okay, I got this much timing in, this is happening, this is not happening, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I mean, keep in mind, I'm, a, I'm fairly uh, new to tuning an LS engine. I'm an old school guy, but very rarely are you ever gonna have an engine to see 49 or 50 degrees of timing or that percentage, whatever, you know, keep in mind, HP tuners uses some weird terminology and jargon to do percentages, they don't do a straight across. Uh, when you look at their timing map or table, it's in like air mass per grams or something. Yeah, it's weird. You gotta go in there and try to research that because I can't even begin to tell you how it works. But when you're looking at the actual scanner data, it's showing regular manifold absolute pressure on your y-axis or your load, what they call engine load axis is your up and down y-axis is manifold air pressure. Then you have your general engine speed and RPMs across the top. And it's showing me, because I have highlighted that what I'm gonna only, I am forced to believe that is a detonation issue or a knock event for some reason, the computer's throwing 49, either it's either 49 degrees or 49%. The way this thing reads, it's kind of hard to understand. And that's what's causing that peak. That's what's, what's causing that little red issue right there. And what's kind of cool is you can click on it. And when you highlight it down here at the bottom, up here, it will show you. See that, how that number 49 is white and the rest of them are black? It's telling you, okay, this was at 49. You're, you're experiencing some knock. Now keep in mind, as far as I'm concerned, as far as my input is concerned, I have not changed a single number on any timing table in the tune. All my corrections or changes were in fuel, um, airflow ratio targets, how quick the power enrichment comes in, uh, rev limiters, all that. I haven't changed fuel pressure parameters, injectors, nothing. All that is as I received this computer from the guy who unlocked it. 
So I'm assuming he didn't do anything to my timing tables or my fuel tables that this is how GM delivered it. My question is, why would it be throwing that much timing into an engine that's sitting there idling or revving at 1800 RPMs? Because this one's showing 49 degrees or percent at, let's see, 1805 RPMs. That's, I don't know. I'm still trying to uh, wrap my mind around is that some kind of percentage of a scale of timing or is that an actual 48.5 to 49 degrees of timing um, just a real quick reference when you have like an HEI distributor in an old school small block Pontiac Oldsmobile Ford whatever if it's a, a distributor you will have a base timing setting an advanced curve and then you can also have vacuum advance there it is not it's not uncommon for you to have 50 degrees total timing which means that once you're at highway speed or at a constant cruise rpm where you're high vacuum low load you're just cruising down the road you can get vacuum advance added to your distributor advance and those can come up to 50 degrees for fuel economy okay I'm, I'm, I'm fully aware of that but in a situation like this where you know it is pulling um, I'm assuming that's going to be vacuum uh, it's showing 20 kPa of manifold pressure 1805 rpm I don't know why it would have 49 degrees of timing if that in fact is an actual representation of degrees of timing and not a percentage of something. So keep in mind also, I only run 87 octane fuel, which this computer and engine came out of a 2000 Tahoe that runs on 87 octane. So it shouldn't be programmed or calibrated with parameters requiring a higher octane fuel. So basically what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna go through this little data log and just see what in the world's going on with this thing so that uh, <clears throat> we can see you know, why is this thing throwing so much timing at it that it would cause it to have a, uh, you know, an event, we'll call it. Because, you know, these terms are always fun to play with. But if I'm experiencing any kind of knock that's not related to lifters, I need to fix it. You know what I mean? I'm not going to sit there and detonate my engine apart or do something weird like that. But I need to verify, okay, what is this red line at the bottom? Because there's absolutely no indication of what that is. And uh, is it a just direct relation to some other noise the engine heard? Because your knock sensors can retard timing for many, many different reasons. So, But I'm going to say, based on this data log, that's going to be a timing issue. That's going to be too much timing without the right amount of fuel to control it. So, um, again, I do not have a active wideband hooked up so that the data log can monitor my air, my target air fuel ratio. So that is coming. I have the adapter and the plug to use with the HP Tuner Pro but I haven't got the wiring set up for it yet. I'm gonna work on that this afternoon. Actually, as soon as I get done making this video. So, I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Um, hopefully this little bit of uh, uh, show and tell can help somebody and maybe they can help me too. So if you guys have any positive information you guys can send back to me, please uh, put, some, put it in the comments. Let me know what's going on, what these look, little red spikes indicate and uh, then again keep watching guys i'll just keep trying to learn what i'm doing and muddle through it until i make it work so thanks again for watching